resistance is futile. Boldly going where no show has gone before. This is The Week in Geek with David D. Squared and Brian Held. Heard live on News Talk 99.5 WRNO and the iHeartRadio app. Here are your hosts, Brian Held and D Squared. Greetings, citizens of Earth. This is The Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. I'm your host, D Squared, with... Brian Held. Brian Held. You look all tuckered out today, pal. What's what's the matter with you, man? Man, man, I'm, I am wore out. Are you bushed? You tuckered? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you want to lay out the show first and we can talk about it? Absolutely. All right, guys. We're going to open up the show like we always do with a little top nerd news action. Then we're going to bring on our boy Scungy with his pick of the week, talking some Call of Duty World War II. And apparently, uh, kind of a similar theme with uh, Battlefront 2. Yeah. So, uh, they, we got they, a lot to talk they, about. They are just sucking on all fronts. They are. <laughs> and then, uh, actually, speaking of Battlefront, that'll be our entire third segment right. about Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> what what does Hawaii and Battlefront 2 have to do with anything? We're going to find out. Besides exotic locales. Yes. <laughs> and then, as always, we'll round out the show with what we always affectionately call This Week in Geek History. You ready to do Top Nerd News, Brian? Yes, sir. And now, your Top Nerd News stories from around the world, brought to you by the Viridian Tea Company. Find them on Etsy. And now, your top nerd news stories. Yes, Brian. You have have your hand raised. I I do. (laughs) You you have a question or a comment? The first item on our list is a big thank you to our newest sponsors. That's a Yule Ball. Um, They're going to be on December 16th at At Cafe Cafe Istanbul. Istanbul. Right. And uh, kind of a Harry Potter theme. Break out your dress robes. Exactly. So uh, I don't have any dress robes. I'll just steal my son's. Yeah. I don't think they'll fit (laughs) me. He's as tall as me now. We'll, we'll figure something out for you. Thanks, so, pal. You're, you're going to come, right? This looks right? like my grandmom's robes. <laughs> <laughs> look, I look like my great aunt Tussie. Tussie! <laughs> we'll make you some of those. I'll wear tux. Yeah, we'll, let's do that. Uh, that'll be great. Yeah, I'm, Shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Mystic Management. And Freak Cat at Yahoo. That's uh, where they get the tickets. Freak, the Freak the Cat. The Freak Cat. At Yahoo.com. They, it's a PayPal, so... Oh, they, sweet. Yep. They Making it there. easy. Making it easy. Yep. All right. Well, right out the gate, I want to talk about a movie that was a video game that, well, was a video game, is now a movie. It was also a board game that our friends over at go for games we actually played that and reviewed the game because, remember, it had all the little tasty meeples in it? Uh, a long time ago. I know. A long ago, see, yeah. I, see you, you say I don't remember stuff. Well. But I, I do. I'm surprised at what you remember. Shut up, butthole. All right. This is Rampage. Last night, George was seven feet and weighed 500 pounds. This morning, he's nine feet pushing a thousand. What's happening to my friend? Are you familiar with genetic editing? Changes will be incredibly unpredictable. Is he the only one? Oh, you didn't know about the 30 foot wolf? I was just thinking the only thing that's missing right now is a giant crocodile. It's a lizard, though. It's supposed to be a lizard. Well, you know, they're All trying right, to. Thoughts, Brian. So I saw this trailer for the first time when I saw Justice League on Monday. <gasps> And I knew when I saw the wolf exactly what it was. <laughs> I did too. And I'm like, N- this is this is a new version of Battleship. Is it, a, it, 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 it right? is. But Battleship was a crappy game to start with. Well, Rampage was good old wholesome fun. You know, it was fun. Murder and mayhem on, <laughs> on a citywide level. Look, it was fun as a stand up arcade game. I right? really don't need to see a movie for this. It was this. fun to play at home too. Well <laughs> what I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't even know because like part of it was like feeding quarters into that deal it and was. like let me see how long I can last and no, I I have no <laughs> No zero interest in this. Look, and and <laughs> you wanted something new from Hollywood. You know when I was going to say got that. It. I got something new, and and look look what I, I get for my efforts. Look, right, it's The Rock though, and it's the same people that brought us what other crappy movies like you know uh, 
uh, like the end of the world, like 2012 and all these other crap movies like, oh, oh, San Andreas. That was the movie that The Rock was in. It's the same people who did San Andreas. So they have to like destroy entire cities to make a movie with The Rock. Well, can can I shift topics real fast with The Rock? OK, sure. All right. Have you seen the trailer for the new Jumanji? I have, and I love it. Okay, and you know, and I'm it's starting to grow on me. It better. Right? Because it's a it's a sequel, right? It's carrying yeah. the story to a, a newer audience. Because in the Justice League they had the trailer for Jumanji too. Yes, exactly. And and it and the line sums up the movie perfectly where the guy gets the Jumanji game, throws it on the bookshelf, and goes, Who the hell plays board games anymore? Well, now, of course all of us nerds are like you know, up yours, pal. Right, because but the, right, it it is a great thing where like a lot of young kids don't play board games. It's all of us older dudes and and girls and you, ladies. You would be surprised. Well, I, but regardless, I I get the point. Right, and and the thing is, is that eh, you know, I my wife's really excited about it. I I pretty. I'm getting there. I'm getting excited for it. I just love you know. The Rock. Right. Yeah, no. The Rock's great, and it's got Karen Gillian in it. You know, I think it's going to be fantastic, but- I'm missing a whole top two feet of my body. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But on the flip side, I don't need Rampage, right? There's there's no- It's it's about as good as Pixels, right? Oh, come on. Now, you don't know that. You I, don't know that. I'll put a dollar on it. All right. uh, I'll probably lose a dollar, but still, you know, I mean, when, when the crocodile jumped out, I was like, oh, come on. Now, they could have done like like an iguana, maybe, yeah. you know, but I mean, they they're not even doing like uh, the people. So these are this an actual monkey who gets turned into a big giant monkey and a wolf. That's, you know, they when you got killed, you went boop, 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 and you, you shrunk down to like a little uh, person, a, a person. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Wait, are, are you? You know, checking Rampage on its accuracy to the source material. I am, Brian. <laughs> I am. I, I want accuracy in my video game crossover movies. That's even more terrible than the concept. Of the All right, movie. let's talk about children's movies. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Jack Jack with freaking laser beams. You have powers. Yeah, baby. So. <laughs> He sneezes, catches on fire, shoots laser beams out of his eyes. You showed me this right before the show. I know. Isn't it awesome? No, I, I didn't even know anything about it. Incredibles 2, summer of 2018. This is something that I'm excited for. See, they, and, and it was initially supposed to be coming out in 2019, they, and, and they, they brought it. They pushed up the date no, you know, so, that, so that it could get out there because when did it come out? 2012, 2015? I'd have no, to look it up, but yeah, it's I been mean, a while. Yeah, it's been a while. So, I mean, and either which way, though, uh, it I like how they're kind of picking up where they left off because, like, if he's saying you have powers, I mean, it's like it's basically where the last movie ended, you know? Now oh, yeah. Like, Jack, Jack's got powers. And as a parent with children, if I can't imagine if my if my four-year-old, if, if Dean suddenly developed a freaking laser beams coming out of his eyes, I'd be screwed. I'd, yes. just, I'd be dead. You would be. I, no, 2004. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Just a bit outside. Yes. Wow. So, uh, yeah, we're right. due. We're we due. are due, definitely. All right, you want to talk about Justice League real quick? How much bank is DC? All right, uh, I checked the box office numbers earlier today. They're standing at, uh, this is worldwide, Okay. 481,346,000. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Four hundred eighty-one million three hundred forty-six thousand. So four hundred eighty-two yeah. million. Let's yeah. just round up, Ryan. Right. Okay. God, you're such a nitpicker. Well, <laughs> who was nitpicking on so rampage is, a minute ago? Is it good? It, okay. So, what, so. What, what is the money levels compared to Marvel? Because I know you know those. Um, it's not there yet. I mean, it's looking it's looking decent. All right. Right. So here here's the deal. All right. I know I'm being recorded right now. <laughs> right. Okay. It wasn't bad. <gasps> All right. Glowing praise from Brian. <laughs> okay, it was a step in the right direction. All right, right. Wonder Woman is still a superior movie. Right, mm. BVS mm-hmm. is still a dumpster fire. This is kind of you know kind of in the middle. Right, I mean, right. and and he, honestly, look, the first half of the movie was kind of a train wreck. It was all over the place. Right, they're trying to they're really trying to establish just way too much stuff going on. Yeah, right. The second half was kind of tidy. Right, there was a yeah. lot of action. And and I was kind of getting in, you know, enjoying that part, but I didn't feel bored throughout the entire time. I wasn't angry, right? Wow! Like in, I swear to you, in BVS, I was sitting in my seat stewing in anger, right? <laughs> 
but but I didn't have that for this. So look, I'm I'm happy that they they've done better. Right. Right. They've got more work to do. You know. Well, they do. And and so this is hopefully a step in the right direction. That's that's kind of what my stance is. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, <laughs> I loved the race though. I mean, they they they've raced that all was, the time. And as a ch- at like literally the night before when I read Dean his bedtime stories, right? Uh, I've got this old Christmas book of of of, of Superman, the Super Friends stuff, and it's the Flash and Superman racing to the North Pole and back, nice, and then stopping and saving Santa Claus and the Joker who got involved. It was crazy, but it, it was it was fun stuff. Yeah, no, no, that was the the race was cute. It was, it was good. cute. Yes. You just said cute. Nice little touch. All right. What, what What's next? You tell me, man. You're you're driving know. this freight train. <laughs> well, one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, what, what, what's the deal with this uh, VR, the augmented reality deal that we were looking at earlier? The, uh, so, Apple acquired uh, Vervana for 30 mil. Yeah. Apple has acquired this company that does augmented reality. Right. So. You know, virtual reality is that headset. It kind of blocks out all light. It's got a screen inside. Right. Augmented reality is like what we've seen from Microsoft with the HoloLens technology, where it's uh, essentially like an overlay right. of, of what's happening around you. You're seeing through these glasses, and you're having images added on top of it, which right. is super awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like like a you know a heads up display where it kind of like puts like a ghost image kind of deal over es- it a little bit. Essentially, but there are complaints or criticisms of that technology in that it it can't produce true blacks right right? and And slow to to render in time it is and so this company is making innovations in that in that ar space yeah one of the things i read in the article is that they've got they cut the the time down to three milliseconds right you know one of the things that they're doing is you are getting much like a vr headset where it's cutting out all the light right however it's rendering everything that you would normally see Right. With that three millisecond delay, and then adding stuff on top of it, so you can get the true blacks in a really good image. Yeah, like like a full, an, not animatronic, but whatever the hell, animation. Right, kind of exactly. Deal. So, and and I and, thought it was interesting that um, was it Tim Cook from Apple. He was like, you know, we're not worried about being the first; we're worried about being the best. Right. I mean, that, does it, it even has infrared cameras to watch your hands and stuff too? Yeah, because it's doing full motion traction right. of of your entire body and everything. That's pretty insane, man. It it is. You know, we still have a lot of work to do in the AR space, but it is pretty impressive what they've put out so far. VR is is really good where it's at, and it can go further too. The both of them blending together, so. Well, it, it, maybe we'll actually get the Oasis real soon because it was going to the movies to see Justice League. Right. Like all the trailers, I, 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 I was, I, I, I was sporting a tent. <laughs> Every trailer, I was like, "This is good stuff." Yeah. Even Rampage. No, not so much. You're, you're, we're gonna, we're gonna go. We can go, <laughs> and I'll be as angry as I was with BVS. Why are you so angry, Brian? You're always angry. <laughs> All right, take us the break. All right, guys, when we get back, we're going to hear from Scungy in his pick of the week. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Spirits on bourbon. Spirits on bourbon. Come to 615 Bourbon, home of the resurrection. Try their gumbo, wings, couchon de lait, or a ribeye steak. Have a shot on Edward's barber chair or sit at his haunted table. Check out their website at spiritsonbourbon.com and watch their video from Spike TV's Bar Rescue. Come to Spirits on Bourbon for a haunting good time. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Held. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid, is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. 
You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. In a New Orleans that never was and never will be, airships float high above the city while platoons of clockwork automatons patrol the streets below. In Storyville, pirates, streetwalkers, gamblers, and thieves prowl back alleys in search of their next mark. New Orleans by Gaslight, the premier anthology of locally written and locally produced steampunk poetry and fiction, all set in Victorian New Orleans. Buy it now, available in both paperback and Kindle versions at Amazon.com. New Orleans by Gaslight. You're listening to the Weekend Geek. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. Make it a habit, will ya? It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Here's David and Brian. Welcome back. This is the Weekend Geek. I'm your host, D Squared with Brian Helm. You love that rejoin, no, Brian. I know you do. I don't. Yes, you it's do. It's disturbing. Well, you know who does love it? Scungy? Yes. It's time for him. I am not what you would call a handsome man. Scungy's Pick of the Week is brought to you by GameStop and ThinkGeek.com. Scungy's Pick of the Week. He might be an idiot savant. Woohoo! Scungy, what's shaking bacon? You're right. I I do love that rejoin. For some strange reason, there's something about that that just hits right at home. <laughs> Don't Buffalo, Buffalo Bill right here. Don't on, encourage on him with us. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that there's a well on my property. And I'm not saying <laughs> but that I, I've put people in it. But you're not saying there isn't. But I'm not saying that there isn't. All right. What are we talking about? <laughs> We're <laughs> probably like no. Uh, we're talking about Call of Duty World War II. Oh, nice. Okay. So, um, well, I mean, let's let's be honest. Another year, another Call of Duty. Right. Yeah. So, is it better yeah. than Call of Duty One and Two way back in the day? Um, this is what I'm going to say. <laughs> the I mean, like, as Dave knows, I'm in the same wheelhouse as Dave. I love history games. Okay. You know, I love games that are set in history. And this one is, now, the story campaign is good. It's got a great story to it. I mean, it's, unfortunately, it you know, like a lot of games and stuff, it kind of forgets that the war started, you know, in 1939. So, but let's just start it when the Americans come into the war. Yay. <laughs> okay. Know? So it, 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 even then, it's like, you know what, let's kind of forget about most of it, and let's start it at D-Day. So the game, the, the it starts at D-Day. Okay. All right. Fair so enough. now it is, I will tell you this, when it comes to a cinematic game experience, you, you really can't beat the campaign for Call of Duty. It is phenomenal. I mean, anybody who's seen the first 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan... Hmm. This is very reminiscent. The opening of the game is very reminiscent of that. Nice. All right. So um, you're on the, you know, you're in the Higgins boat, and you know they drop, they, you know, they drop the the gate, and all hell breaks loose. Okay. And you play this guy. Uh, you play this uh, uh, private Daniels, and it goes through from D Day all the way through 
um, basically the end of the war. So you're you're going through the French countryside all the way into Germany. You're part of the French resistance when they take back Paris. Vive la resistance! So, I mean, and the story is really good. Now let's get to the bad part. The story well, I beat in one sitting. Really? It's that short? God. It's really short. So I'm... It's, I gotta ask, is is it so you're you're playing one character in this single player mission throughout the whole thing? Well, you can jump over there's one mission where you play somebody else. Okay. Cause there, there's one mission where you play somebody else, but then you jump back into Daniels. But you're following, you know, it's not only him, it's his you know, his you know, it's his platoon, it's all of them and the dynamic between the lieutenant and the sergeant. There's, you know, animosity there and you know, they have history and it, I mean, the story is really good. It's just super short. Yeah, because the the original way back in the day, the original Call of Duty one and two, which were both World War Two settings, um, had those campaign modes. But you jumped around. One, you were a USGI. One, you're British RAF. Next yeah. one, you're a Russian, you know, infantryman, which was awesome because it was what was the big Ooh, battle uh, in uh, in Russia, uh, Stalingrad? Is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, inside yeah, the city. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. That, that was what uh, World at War. I think that's that, that was, was World. That was World at that War, was. and you were playing. I think it was a. Uh, the character was voiced by Gary Oldman, I think. Yeah, and the other one was voiced by uh, your boy from uh, 24. Keeper Sutherland. Yeah, Keeper Sutherland. Well, but in the Call of Duty campaign for that, you get, you get pushed through a line, and the commissars yeah, are there, right, right, right? Yeah. and you get yeah. bullets, and that's right. it. Yep. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. brutal. It was, I mean, that was, I mean, this one goes through some, I mean, you also, there's the Battle of the Bulge in this one. Okay. So, it, it's, there's, I mean, there's some historical... You know, battles that you're going to go through, and I mean, it's dy- it's very cinematic. It's very like, wow, this is awesome. These are breathtaking moments that are going on in the entire, you know, in the game. Um, but like I said, it's just it's short. Now, most people play Call of Duty for the multiplayer, and you're going to play multiplayer. Multiplayer is fine. It's a lot of fun. You know, you have all all the different game modes of of Call of Duty, which are you're your squads. You're going to prestige like you normally do. Um, but the real thing, the other than like multiplayer, what people have been coming to Call of Duty back for for years is the zombie modes. Uh, interesting. Yeah. And this one has Nazi zombies in it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. But they're not like they're they're like ex- they're, they have this doctor. I can't remember the name of the uh, actor, but he's one of those. Ger- he's one of those European actors. He's kind of. Uh, I think he played in Ace Ventura. He was the guy, the rich guy in Ace Ventura who had the shark. <laughs> Okay. I think it's him. I'm not sure. <laughs> what, 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 That's very obscure. obscure. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. Sure. Okay. It's the only I can remember right now. Leave gotcha. me alone. Been, okay. All right. Been, I've been in retail hell for you know five days. It's all good. My brain Shop don't at work GameStop. Good. Scungy's lonely. <laughs> There's no one in there. <laughs> oh no. There. Yeah. Exactly. Please. No. All right. Line so, out my so, store. Um, so but the zombie thing is. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, it's. But, well, no, yeah, this is, they're, they're doing, like, experimentations on the zombies. So it's not, like, just Nazi zombies. I mean, you have, like, these uber-brute zombies that are, you know, it's okay. really, really cool. And All that's right. one of the best modes in it. So kind of like a little Left for Dead in there, sort of? Kind of like a little bit like that, yeah. it's The zombie mode has always been a survival mode, though. It's like, how long can you survive yeah, I hate that. waves and waves of zombies? I hate it. No, that's hate cool. It. I like it. I hate it. It's all good. I, 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 want, I want a story mode, zombie mode. All right. Price and platform, Scungy. It's uh, going to be fifty nine ninety nine for the regular edition. You can still get your hands on. There might be a pro edition out there or not that comes with the season pass. That's $100. It's so on PC, the dirty, dirty PC, mm. PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. All right. So I yeah. need to ask, uh, Scungy, how was uh, your Black Friday? What Black Friday? We were open on Thanksgiving, sir. Oh, wow. Yeah. So how were those two days for you? Uh, I've worked retail for 20 years. I've never seen what I saw on Thursday. It was absolutely madness. It really? Was, it was, it was absolutely, I mean, it was busy. I mean, I had the line every, you couldn't fit anybody else in my store, and the line went out of my store through the parking lot. So what you're telling me is that your shelves are completely empty, save for Star Wars Battlefront Two. You know what? It didn't sell as much as I thought it was going to sell, and yes, I have a lot of those left. But yeah, our, our my my cupboard is like old Mother Hubbard's right now. But but now now like uh, Call of Duty has uh, like loot boxes, don't they? They have uh, gear. They have uh, drops. Yes, loot drops. But oh. you don't. You don't. It's not like 
I mean, and and since the last show, um, Star Wars has actually stopped doing. They stopped the microtransactions completely with Star Wars. For now, yeah, we're for, we're for gonna... now until they until they go back and see they're gonna you know reevaluate it. But as of right now, there's no you cannot spend any real money on it. Yeah, we're gonna dig into that next segment, Scunty. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah, it's it's thanks Hawaii. Yes, it's got a deep well to dig into. So yes, absolutely. Hmm. But uh, no, it's foreshadowing. It's, yes, but it's interesting that you can confirm that you yourself have copies for sale at your store that just didn't move. No, yeah. no. It, I mean, it. I mean, and like I said, like I said in the review. I mean, the story mode is great. It's just so many people were thrown off by that. I had people coming in going, "I'm canceling my reserve because I want nothing to do with oh this." Oh my god! I'm a yeah. huge Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I want nothing to do with this because I feel like they've shoved this down our throats, and we don't like it. Yeah, people got sand in their cracks. Oh uh, no, I think I think you know to a degree they're justified. No, they're not. Yes, no, absolutely. they're not. A bunch of no. We'll talk about it next babies. segment. Scungy, you know what? I'm not going to fire you because I'm going to fire Brian's ass. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. All right, get out of the show though. Thank you, Scungy. Later, guys. All right, bye. <laughs> All right, well... Uh, All right, Mr. Sand in your crack. What? It's on, man. On like Donkey Kong. So, guys, stay tuned <laughs> and find out if I get fired or not next segment. <laughs> You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. I can't fire you. You, you just wrapped on a huge <laughs> cinematic experience. <laughs> we'll be back after this. Dust off those dress robes and get ready for Mystic Management Yule Ball Saturday, December 16th at Cafe Istanbul in New Orleans. Prepare to dance the night away to the live musical stylings of Dr. Six Sixet. Then take a break at the bar with a cold butterbeer or some liquid luck. Tickets are $25 and can be purchased from the Freak Cat at Yahoo.com. Look for our event page at Yule Ball on Facebook for more information. Doors open at 10.30 p.m. Join us at a Yule Ball by Mystic Management on December 16th at Cafe Istanbul for a magical evening. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby and Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. Jezebel Johnston. Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Hell. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Welcome back to the Week in Geek, your source for geek and pop culture news that's trending now. Like them on Facebook at The Week in Geek Radio Show. Here are your hosts, D Squared and Brian Held. Oh, welcome back, New Orleans. You're listening to The Week in Geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. This is Brian Held with D Squared. So let me make a case for why you should keep me. Okay. So today we wrapped final day of filming on Hopeless, a Star Wars story. And that's going to go into post-production now. We're targeting... Ooh, uh, you mean post, as they call it? Yes. Uh, cool. And we're, we're targeting February for the release on that, somewhere around like that Mardi time Gras? frame. 
Yeah, probably somewhere around there. We're going to do a little premiere and everything, have a rap party, and uh, we'll try to get um, John Armijo in the studio. Yeah. Cool. Talk about the whole thing. It'll be cool. Yeah. So, and um, tomorrow I go in for a fitting at uh, NCIS New Orleans. Oh, my God. Yeah. So. Hashtag LCBH. I know. See, and now I can't let you go. Right. Exactly. I, I can't quit you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Hawaii, Brian. Yeah. So, so State Rep Chris Lee. Right. Now, this guy, uh, he uh, is proposing legislation to uh, what they're what, – what, the saying that's in their crack is is they're saying that all the, the loot boxes, specifically for Battlefront 2, is that it's it, it's – comparable to online gambling right and then they 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 traipsed on a few more state reps uh state rep uh, uh sean quinlan uh who had some interesting words and then they traipsed out uh, a crappy gamer parent and then a crappy regular parent who can't set boundaries for their child and so obviously you know where my bread is buttered in this whole damn right. conversation here but uh did you want to say anything else before i play this chris lee no no because i like this this uh audio clip all right here we go we are here today to uh, ensure future protections for uh, kids, youth, and everyone when it comes to the spread of predatory practices in online gaming and the significant financial consequences that it can have on families and has been having on families around this nation. This game is a Star Wars themed online casino designed to lure kids into spending money. It's a trap. It's a trap. And this is something that we need to address to ensure that particularly kids who are underage, who are not uh, psychologically um, and, and emotionally mature enough to be able to gamble, which is why gambling is prohibited under 21, uh, are protected Thanks. from being trapped into these cycles, it's a trap. which have compelled many folks to spend thousands of dollars in gaming fees online. Uh, we're looking at legislation this coming year which could prohibit access or prohibit the sale of these games to folks who are underage in order to protect families, as well as prohibiting different kinds of mechanisms in those games. We've been talking with several other states as well, legislators there, who are looking at the same thing. It's a trap. I think this is an appropriate time to make sure that um, these issues are addressed before this becomes the new norm for every game. First off, do you think he had a clue? Come, come, children, come to Jabba's Palace and spend <laughs> your parents' life savings. <laughs> Online casino. Uh, hey. You know, I do wonder if it was cal- the whole it's a trap deal. I wonder if that was calculated on his part because he's kind of young. Right. I, I, I'm go- I don't know. <laughs> All right. I, I guess he had to. Right. But I mean, then he then he just, he destroys his whole argument by by trying to be one of the cool kids <laughs> by making a Star Wars analogy in his band the Star Wars casinos. Well, b- bef- is, uh, b- before I totally destroy his deal. You did have that other senator you had a clip from. Let's yeah, Sean Quinlan here. Yeah. This is a pretty short one, though. One of the things that's really disturbing uh, about this to me is that um, this was previously a business practice that was mostly seen in the mobile gaming market, you know, your iPad, your iPod games. Um, and now it's moved into um, the main event. This is a AAA title um, that's being released by the world's largest uh, gaming studio, um, and it has the most popular intellectual property in the world attached to it, and it's marketed squarely um, at children. Some of you folks who are a little older may remember a character by the name of Joe Camel. Uh, he's not around anymore, and um, we didn't allow Joe Camel to encourage your kids to smoke cigarettes, and we shouldn't allow Star Wars to encourage your kids to gamble. <laughs> Wow. Now, say what you just said before. Come to Java's Palace, <laughs> right. children. Gamble your life savings and, away. And and smoke, right? And you know? So, have wait. have death sticks, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Vader must have been a smoker. Is that what it is? Yes, he we was. Did you see that? Did, did did like Lucas sign some non smoking agreement? Well, Apparently, the lessons of Obi Wan to give up the death sticks didn't apply to Anakin. But <laughs> he didn't use the force on him. Exactly. But the thing is, is that they've mischaracterized the entire argument. They don't really understand what's happening. They right. think it's gambling. It's not gambling no. at all. Right? Yes, you can spend money on these things. Yes. But you do get something. 
right? Gambling is the is the fact that you are taking a chance at spending your money, right. and you may get nothing in return. Right. You always get something. Your level, your value might fluctuate as, oh, crap, that's nothing. Oh, it's a it's a common skin, you know, whatever. Right. You know, but you know that going in. You do know that going in. The big, the real argument, right, the, the problem that actual gamers who play these games has is, is it's a competitive advantage. That's the right. this this game. If you buy these things, you will do better than the person who cannot spend the money. Basically, right. whoever has the most money wins, and that's that's unreasonable. Well, right. And and the thing though also is that it's unreasonable un- until everybody catches up though. So yeah, some people are going to have an edge, but once I start logging forty hours, it's on, man. You know, now granted, now if I could get in a damn time machine, you know, and, and fight these little 13 year old, you know, reflex ninja cats, then maybe I could, I could hang my own. But I mean, right now, I'm pushing 40, man. I'm, 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 I got, I got gingivitis in my fingers. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's terrible. Right. Um, did you know that, that Disney had a position on this? Yeah, they were pissed, right? It says, uh, Star Wars has always been about the fans, and whether it's Battlefront or any other Star Wars experience, they come first. That's why we support EA's decision to temporarily remove in-game payments to address Wait, fan concerns. What, what, how, what about the payment? What was that word before the payment? That's why we support EA's decision to temporarily, uh, temporarily. remove in-game payments to address fan concerns. But until the the stuff blows over and Hawaii stops trying to legislate stupidity, well, and Belgium too, they're on the on, on the boat too. Belgium, regardless, Stop America. The thing America. is, is they're really in between a rock and a hard place because whom the EA. Right and Dice, who's yeah, the maker right. of the game, right? Because do, can they reinstate this microtransaction system? I don't think that they can, right? Because if they do, it's immediately going to flare up fan backlash again, right? And if they don't, when did we become such sissies? Well, but here's the deal: is that a lot of gamers have existed with systems like Overwatch or Team Fortress or whatever, where you can get loot boxes, but they're inconsequential; they're cosmetic, right? 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 You know, and and you you're on the same level playing field as everybody else, and right. it's separated by your skill as a player. That's reasonable, right? Right? But be, basically, paying to win is not no right. No, we, we're all in agreement on okay. that. I mean, but but. Competitive edges versus versus actually, you know, just outright schooling people and crushing them is a different thing. Now, here, this is the one as a parent that really pissed me off. Okay, this, this is this is the uh, a lady with two teenage sons. All right, here you go. All right, I'm a parent of two teenage boys. Um, I feel like this is just one more thing that we have to watch out for and try to protect our kids Drugs from. Drugs and sex. Yeah, gambling's addictive. There's a lot of other things we already have to worry about, um, other types of substance use that's addictive as well. And for parents, we can't protect our children from everything. Things that they can get on their phone, on their laptops, things they can do at their friends' houses, you know, accessing games like this, we can't control it. So we do need help from regulations to help set boundaries when something is targeting, advertising, tempting kids to get involved in something that costs them money that they don't have. Of course, of course, course they don't have money. They're kids. Money For Christ's stuff. sake. Oh, my God. This pisses me off to no end. She says it right there. She craps on her own argument by saying, I need the government to set boundaries for my children. What, are you that crappy of a parent? Okay. You can't set boundaries for your own child? You, I don't. DJ ain't got no damn debit card. Are you, you're, you're right. Woo. We're, we're starting. We're toeing the line on, on mm. politics, Dave. No, we, we're not. It, 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 this whole thing is like, as a parent, as right. a gamer, and my son having, he doesn't have no damn money. Right. If, he, if, if he comes to me and says, hey, dad, I want to buy a loot box, get your ass to work. Look, <laughs> go clean out the, the litter box. Go do this. Go wash my damn car. I'll give you some money. But And, you know, that's, and that's reasonable. One time, one time when DJ was like six, I had my credit card information on my Xbox, and he did not know. He saw a game he wanted. You know, he's like, oh, okay, if I push this button, I can play the game. Well, next thing I know, he, he bought this crappy uh, uh, Xbox. What was the stupid uh, the the movement thing? The sensors. It was a crappy. Oh, the uh, the Connect. Yes, thank yes. you. Um, he bought this that 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 
TV show, ABC's, you know, game where you like you jump over stuff. Sixty something bucks. Nice. I oh, I was pissed. I I made him work off every damn cent, and we had a nice long conversation about you don't buy anything, you don't do this, you don't do that. Real simple boundaries were set, and he has never gone back there. Well, and and that's cool, but you know, you're being a good parent, right? People want to legislate <sighs> their their parenting, God. right? That's a whole separate discussion. Okay, what, is, what is your non-parent uh, opinion on this? Well, you know, I think actually in this instance, the market's going to handle it because if we look at this, there's a picture that was posted to Reddit okay. that shows the, the Black Friday shell for all the games in some store, and uh, there's nothing but Battlefront 2 titles at the top, <laughs> right? Just all the boxes, okay. and a couple of titles of some Sonic uh game at the bottom everything else is empty so you know the the best way to vote in some of these instances is with your wallet right and i think that people are they they're it was an unreasonable system to begin with right ea is basically paying the price for it and uh maybe we'll find out when uh if it affects their stock now, now we we didn't even talk about this last week there was another article that that you and i came across where they're saying that we're not being overcharged we're being undercharged so the whole deal about that is the fact that prices have not moved on games in a number of years. Right. We've been, right? At, we've been sitting at 60 for a while now. We've been sitting for a very long while. Now, consider inflation, right? Those yeah. programmers and stuff have to make money to make these games, right? Yeah. The way that the industry has been handling that is through microtransaction systems. Right. Uh, I believe that Blizzard made $3.6 billion last year from microtransactions from games like Overwatch and stuff like that. So, you know, that's a way to supplement that and keep that price fixed. It looks yeah. good for folks, right? But maybe this is some movement on that. Maybe, you know, the industry looks at it and says, well, loot boxes aren't going to work. People are, are pushing back on yeah. it. We're going to have to raise prices. I mean... You know, inflation happens. I'm going to go happens. punch every person that was like, get rid of the loot box. <laughs> or, you know, that's the only thing, too, is, you know, can they reinstate loot boxes? Or are they, you know, is it no good? Or do they charge for DLC that was supposed to be, be free? free? Right. Well, that was the best part. Of it. It, it seems like everybody just wants something to bitch about. Because, I mean, we were all excited about, like, you know, you... You pay one price, you get it all. We we, we expo expose the virtues of espouse the virtues yes. of how great it would be to have, you know, buy one, you get all this content for free, new maps come out, you don't have to buy more of it. Because like Battlefront, the 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 first one, uh I didn't buy any extra maps. I said, you know, up yours, man. So I voted with my wallet. I didn't buy any more maps. So I was like, cool, sixty bucks, I get everything, score. Right. But uh, now, you know, that everybody's bitching about the transactions. So what? Now what? They're going to start charging us for the new maps again? They they may have to. Well, they, yeah. Right? I mean, you know, they got online casinos. The, well, no, they got to keep the lights on somehow. I, I know. I'm, I'm, right. But uh, where was it? Um, these guys over at um, one second here. Project Red. Okay. These guys are working on Cyberpunk 2077. And uh, which looks pretty cool. But yeah. basically, uh, people are asking them like, hey, you're you know, you're going to have a multiplayer deal. Are you going to do like kind of this microtransaction type stuff? And they're mm -hmm. like, we got no BS with our stuff. What you pay for <laughs> is what you get. That's going to be the new stock answer. Will there be microtransactions? No, absolutely not. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, saying them all. Well, saying them all. you know, maybe maybe uh, EA needs to take a, a page on a Project Red's book. Well, you know, that, that then our, we're going to suddenly have to start paying fair market value. And next thing you know, like we're always you know going, oh, well, if you want the extra early edition, you got to pay 100 Like what was Scungy just saying about like the, the $100 version of it where you can get uh, uh, for Call of Duty, like, right. like the, the season pass kind of yeah. stuff and pay for it right out the gate. Uh, you know... Uh, we're going to pay for it one way or the other. We absolutely will. You know, so I got no problem spreading the cost around to everybody. You yeah. Know? That, that, um, that smacks of politics, too. <laughs> it does. It does. Wow. Man, Dave, we can't job. get away from this crap. It's it's tough. Um, Hey, uh, real quick before we cut the you break. Know, you know what we could do? Okay, what? Um, Megabots canceled their tournament. They Sons up. Yeah, they had a uh, nine hundred and fifty thousand dollar Kickstarter mm -hmm. that they were trying to. They needed close to a million dollars in order to kick off the whole they were, they first were $50, season. Fifty thousand dollars short? No, uh, no, no. They were. I think they got a couple hundred thousand. They didn't get 
oh, okay. near it. But, you know, most all Kickstarters within the first 24 hours, 48 hours is when it gets the big hit, and then there's yeah. usually a push at the end. They didn't get near enough at the front end. <sighs> So uh, we're gonna, they're they're looking in other ways to monetize giant robot fighting. So stay tuned on that one. Sponsorship. Just this arm sponsored by they, they Biff's are, Wax Company. They already have tons of sponsors who are providing <laughs> treads and AutoCAD software and all kind of stuff. You so know what, maybe EA or or some of these other groups should just buy old comic books and then just auction them because you know they're they're auctioning Superman comic book number one. Are they? Yeah, take a listen. The Profiles in History Auction House in Calabasas, California, is going to sell a copy of Action Comics Number 1 at an auction event scheduled to be held December the 19th in Los Angeles. The June 1938 issue features the debut of Superman, and it's expected to sell for as much as a million dollars. Bam! Next year marks the 80th anniversary of the debut of Superman, who is among the superheroes that's featured in the new Warner Brothers movie, Justice League. (gasps) Mark Mayfield, NBC News Radio. We We cheated on Fox, though. Did we? They didn't cover the story. I had to go to the other guys. Oh, well. You know, it we, happens. It happens. All right. Go, uh, do we need to cut yes, the break? We do need to go to break, but I just wanted to play that. Sorry. All right, guys, when we get back, we'll close out the show as we always do with this week in geek history. You're listening to the week in geek on News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid by Nancy Hansen, is now an audiobook read for you by Brian Held. It's a tale of a young girl from Tortuga who disguises herself as a boy and bluffs her way onto a pirate ship, chasing after her one true love, only to find adventure on the high seas. Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmaid is available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. Get your copy of Jezebel Johnston today. Black Tie Tans, the premier mobile spray tanning professionals of New Orleans. Black Tie Tans will come to you and give you a natural glistening glow on the go. First-time customers get 20% off their first tan. Find them on Facebook at Black Tie Tans or email them at blacktietans at gmail.com to set your appointment. Going to a wedding? Going out to the club? Black Tie Tans will give you the look you need. Black Tie Tans, tell your pale friends. In a New Orleans that never was and never will be, airships float high above the city while platoons of clockwork automatons patrol the streets below. In Storyville, pirates, streetwalkers, gamblers, and thieves prowl back alleys in search of their next mark. New Orleans by Gaslight, the premier anthology of locally written and locally produced steampunk poetry and fiction, all set in Victorian New Orleans. Buy it now, available in both paperback and Kindle versions at Amazon.com. New Orleans by Gaslight. Friends, is your morning tea just not your cup of tea? Then try the tea blends of Viridian Tea Company. At Viridian Tea Company, they sell blends guaranteed to make you think outside the box. With such blends as My Enemy's Tears, Goth Librarian, Cyberpunk, and many more, your tea experience will be out of this world. Look for the blends at Tubby & Coo's Mid-City Bookshop, located at 631 North Carrollton, or on Etsy at Viridian Tea Company. Try Viridian Tea Company today. Your taste buds will thank you. You've waited for it, and now it's here. Get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt and help support our show. These 100% cotton black t-shirts with the Week in Geek Radio Show logo are going fast. So don't wait. Go to twigradio.com and order your shirt now. Just go to twigradio.com and get your very own Week in Geek Radio Show t-shirt. 15 bucks up to XL, $17 for 2X and 3X. That's twigradio.com. Dust off those dress robes and get ready for Mystic Management Yule Ball Saturday, December 16th at Cafe Istanbul in New Orleans. Prepare to dance the night away to the live musical stylings of Dr. Six Sixtet. Then take a break at the bar with a cold butterbeer or some liquid luck. Tickets are $25 and can be purchased from the Freak Cat at Yahoo.com. Look for our event page, a Yule Ball, on Facebook for more information. Doors open at 10.30 p.m. Join us at a Yule Ball by Mystic Management on December 16th at Cafe Istanbul for a magical evening. My name is Optimus Prime, and you are listening to... Starscream here, and you are listening to The Week in Geek. Call me Lord. 
Welcome back. This is the Week in Geek, the home of Starscream, and I still hate Rodimus Prime. Uh, Hot Rod <laughs> must die. I will never forgive Hot Rod. All right. Good enough. Right in the tailpipe. That's what I think about Hot Rod. Right in the tailpipe. <laughs> what did we do this week in Geek History? Yes, sir. All right. This Week in Geek History. We're sending you back to the future. Yes! Oh, my God! This Week in Geek History is brought to you by Jezebel Johnston, Devil's Handmade by Nancy Hansen, read by Brian Held, available on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. This Week in Geek History. Yes! Oh, my God! da 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 Da-na-na. All right, we got to be quick, right? Yes, yes, yes. All yes. right, uh, November 21st, 1931. Sees the release of Frankenstein, based on Shelley's novel starring Boris Karloff, is released, becomes an all-time classic, and of course, mm. the Frankenstein, the original book, right. was the very first um, science fiction novel. Wow. Yes. We're that's... not the rich. <laughs> Sorry, I was young Frankenstein. I know. <laughs> My bad. I know. All right, uh, November 22nd, 1968. Sees the Plato's Stepchildren episode of Star Trek, the original series, that has the famous kiss between Kirk and Ahura. Ah. Yes, the first on-screen uh, interracial kiss. Look at that, breaking boundaries. I know, it's good stuff. That's what real Star Trek is, Dave. Like like the Orville. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know? <laughs> You have dudes sitting on eggs and having male babies. Yeah. <laughs> or, or female baby. Or no, whatever they fe- did. Yes, it was a female baby. <laughs> right, there we All go. right, November 23rd, 1963. Is the very first appearance of Doctor Who on BBC television. It's the longest running science fiction television show in history. Nice. I know, it's good stuff. Um, Let's see. We still got, got time? time yeah. All right. Uh, November 23rd. 2004 sees the release of World of Warcraft to the public in North Ugh. America and Australia, and it is goes on to become the most played MMORPG in the world. Yeah, see, they they, they got a scam going on. And you pay to win, pay to play. No, uh, I, I don't. It is pay to play, so, everybody. But, but subscription, that you know, subscription yeah. based. That, that's how you make some damn money, right? You what? provide a good product, and people pay for it, like like Netflix and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, take my money. They got to watch Stranger Things too. They got to power those servers gotta up watch somehow. Watch the Punisher. Yeah. You watch the Punisher. I hate your face. I did watch the Punisher. It was very good. Thirteen hours. How do you get anything done? I get pl- believe I multitask, Dave. I'll teach you. I'm going to curse you with children. November twenty sixth, nineteen eighty six. <laughs> Sees the end of the original broadcast run of Mask, Mobile Armored Strike Command. <laughs> that was a good one. I facing like off against the vicious evil network of mayhem or Venom. So, nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I, the, the, the toys weren't as cool. Yeah. Your wife is going to kick my ass. Yeah, and she is. <laughs> All right. Birthdays on the 20th. Ming-Na Wen. She was... Um, Oh, from, uh, Agent uh, May it, from yeah. Yeah. yeah, Agents of Shield. Agents of Shield. Uh, on the twentieth, Joshua Gomez. He's Morgan Grimes from Chuck. Uh, he was also a voiceover in uh, Call of Duty, Armored Core, and Bioshock. Wow. Okay. On the twenty-first, Christopher Tolkien, the son of J.R.R. Tolkien, who recently retired from managing the estate. Yeah, that's what Amazon's going to be uh, picking that up, man. Yes. Amazon is picking that up, and I think that's going to be our next like big Game of Thrones series. Yep. You know, so. And yeah, screw the birthdays. I want to let's talk about this real quick. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I mean, he gave up. I mean, I, I hope the crap we're not going to get like the Cimmerillion uh, <laughs> we, extended series. We, I don't want that crap. We are. I don't want it. The, it's it's preludes to to the books. That's where that's Damn the it. source material. It's boring as hell. Just because you you can't read, Dave, doesn't mean that it's not good stories. In it's there. boring. No, look, they're gonna they're gonna put some Hollywood magic on it. It's boobs, gonna... <laughs> boobs and midgets, and I'm in. <laughs> It's all I need. Well, Game of Hamlet's. Thrones already did that. <laughs> you got hobbits. <laughs> so I'm in. All there right, sign me over the Cimmerillion. On uh, the 22nd, Scarlett Johansson. Happy <gasps> birthday. <gasps> there you <gasps> go. Yeah, and on Thank the 24th, you. Denise Crosby. Oh, right? yeah. Tasha oh, Young. Oh, yeah. She was in Playboy one time. Oh, geez, she Dave. Was. Come on. It was really? very artsy and artistic, oh, and I was geez. moved. 
Dave, Dave, do we have to go? <laughs> yeah, we do. All right, you know what, Brian? I want to strongly urge people to check out our Facebook page, though. Facebook.com forward slash The Week in Geek. Check out our website at twigradio.com. Follow us on Twitter at Twig Radio and the Instagram's The Week in Geek. Now, Brian, how can people listen to this lovely show? Well, if you missed any part of tonight's show or you want to catch your favorite part again, you can find us on Spreaker.com or download Spreaker for your smartphone or tablet. We're also on iTunes, YouTube, the iHeartRadio app, and at WRNO.com. This is a god awful song you maybe listen to from the Nerdist. Yeah, the the Stranger Things uh, parody. Yeah, it's, Stranger in My Town. That's it's great. I love Balls. it. So, uh, Dave, I just got a pile of books in. We're gonna get some more authors in for interviews soon. Um, right. Maybe even next week. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. We didn't have a guest today. We didn't. Holy crap. There's Thanks, a lot of- Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Till next time, keep your nerd flag raised high. GFL. Your new home for Walton and Johnson. News Talk 99.5 WRNO FM, New Orleans, and iHeartRadio Station.